Hello and welcome to the Warp Shelf. I'm Frank Duran. I'm Deshaun Vasquez. And today, two artists decide uh, what belongs on your Warp Shelf. Yeah, that can be anything from movies to TV shows to video games. Just anything that sort of moves you and worth, is worth taking with you. That can be physically or spiritually. Although today we're kind of going a little outside of the box somewhat. As far as like <laughs> yeah, at least really... mediums are concerned. We can't really put this one on a shelf for yourself, except if, uh, you know, some merch, maybe, you know, that we may be wearing, uh, you know, like, uh, that's the only thing you can really take back to your shelf with you at the moment. But we're talking about Beetlejuice, the musical. Uh, Me and Deshaun had the, uh, Deshaun gave me a fantastic Christmas gift of, of, Broadway in Boston, uh, it, at the Worcester, uh, Hanover Theater, uh, to see it, uh, the Beetlejuice Broadway tour. And, uh, it's, uh, it, I, you know, I had not seen anything about Beetlejuice the musical beforehand. This was me going in blind. I wanted to, uh, same as Evil Dead the musical. Uh, this is a very similar thing to Evil Dead the musical, us talking about Evil Dead the musical, I feel like, where we're going to be talking about the movie a little bit, Beetlejuice, mm-hmm. we're going to be talking about the musical a little bit. So, guys, if you're, if you haven't seen the musical, this will kind of be kind of a, great way to be like hey uh, like this it what you know this might be something i might want to go see or if if you haven't seen if you have seen the musical uh we're going to be talking about its relations to the movie and uh uh, all the things that makes this musical yes i think great you know like and i think that that's what we're going to talk about today and Uh, maybe you've seen the musical and haven't seen the original movie, yeah. which the old man which, to me is just like, no, those the people don't exist. But y- the you first would think time I so? went, you the would first think time so? I went, there were two girls that were behind me. Like they had to be in their, they had to be like preteens or something. And they were just like, oh, they didn't, they were talking about it, not even realizing it, that it was a movie. And I'm just yeah. like, oh, I'm old. Yeah. It's, but then an old lady behind us at our time being at the musical turns to the guy next to Deshaun and goes, I haven't seen the movie. Is the movie like the musical? And I, me and Deshaun were like, what's going on? What's, ha- <laughs> what is what's happening? happening? What's happening? Like, I, and like, and, and I mean, no, no offense to anybody because everyone has gaps in knowledge or anything like that. Yeah, but I not, just think it's wild. a bunch that, of nerds who watch everything. But I think it's wild that Beetlejuice has become popular as a musical on its own yeah uh, uh, beyond the movie which i thought was already like a cult thing you know like was already you know everybody you know went to fought, hot topic bought beetlejuice stuff you know like that you know like that's it was already like while they were you know, on their way to get thing. while they were on their way to get my nightmare before christmas merch <laughs> or anything joan and vasquez related whether it be like invader zim or the homicidal maniac but you know anything. it's become that like it's 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 dark and spooky but you know it's okay for the general you know yeah. the preteen to that like was, to 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 be into you know that was always thing, you know? like my thing like um i always had seen the original movie a million times when i was a kid growing up anytime yeah. it was always one of those movies like if i saw it pop up on tv i would like oh yeah i'll watch it it's beetlejuice my mom and definitely then we thought eventually it was got scary. the dvd and then i would watch that to death my mom definitely thought it was scary, so we weren't like watching Beetlejuice, you know, like a lot. But I, I definitely watched it when I was a kid and and like and liked it. I'm not like a huge Beetlejuice fan. I'm really, I'm really not. I I when we went into the musical, I was like sitting there being like, I watched this at Halloween. I rewatched Beetlejuice at Halloween. I don't know what the ending of Beetlejuice <laughs> is. I was like, I can't remember, Deshaun. Yeah, like, I, I mean, like, yeah, I've. I can because I've seen it so many times. Like I have a pretty. And then I to I rewatched memory. it, rewatched it again this yesterday, uh, mm. and you know, and 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 it's funny how they've adapted the ending of the musical to this. But it's funny because it's like one of those things that it's just not the important part of the movie. You know, like it's just no. not the memorable part of the movie is the end of the movie, but so might be the most memorable part of the musical is the end of the musical. Like it might be the, uh, you know, like I feel like in some ways the musical is able to like change and enhance uh, the Beetlejuice story and and do a lot of good things. Yeah, to I was story. always 
like I remember the ending just because of a few like set pieces and a couple jokes, yeah. but it is very much like a race to or the end. We've kind of blown our load. We're not really sure how to end it, so we just kind of <laughs> go. Yeah, it's kind of like, okay, let's do this thing. and you're, Let's do the marriage. And you're just like, uh, 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 and it's like the big fight. And it's like, it is wacky and fun. And like, I enjoy that energy that Tim Burton's bringing to that. But also at the same, and, and, and you can see the, the, with those scenes why you could be like, okay, yeah, we, we could do some a musical with this maybe, mm -hmm. you know, like, or as it turned out, an animated show, you know, like, and uh, and, and I think that, there's it's it's funny how it turns the something that was just kind of like oh we've used it and we're just kind of trying to wrap up the story to being definitely one of my favorite parts yeah of did you ever watch uh, much of the cartoon growing up i did i did yeah, that's the so funny did thing is i did watch a bunch of the cartoon uh it was, so it's um... like one of those things that i know beetlejuice as kind of that like jokester more yeah. than because we have like uh, the movie we now have like three him. distinct versions of Beetlejuice that are kind of just wholly their own because even yeah. the cartoon like took its own liberties like Adam and Barbara aren't a thing in the cartoon like Beetlejuice yeah. is just a thing that um Lydia can summon it's it's like almost like a ghost imaginary friend type yeah thing. it was it's kind of like a twisted Casper I've always yeah liked. basically yeah, that. They're, like, they're like instead of friendly ghost <laughs> Beetlejuice you know like it's and like, I sort of understand. Um, I could see why Warner Brothers at the time would have looked at the script, which I did read. I did read like one of the early drafts of the original script just out of curiosity. And this was before we even realized we were going to do an episode. I just did it for shits. Um, I think it was not um, long after I had seen the musical the first time, because when I went to yes. go see it with you is the second time around. I actually got okay. both these suckers. <laughs> hey, there they are. I like there that the uh, one nice. in Boston is an actual playbill yeah that's cool i know i was um, like i was a little disappointed by that but i give it i give credit to hanover for trying to you know get that ad in you know yeah. i give credit i give credit <laughs> and reading it it is it is a zany script it's not it's one of those things where like on paper it's not much different from what we got as a final product but it's just the way like tim burton infected it with like his tim burton this that sort of yes elevated it like, even from an aesthetic standpoint, like, it's like Beetlejuice himself is written more like, they aim more for, like, a gin type thing. Yes. Like, they describe him, he's, like, he's of Middle Eastern descent, and he's much more of, like, a trickster and more like a monkey's paw type thing. He's a little more sinister. They really lean yes. into him creeping over Lydia in the original script, which is like, <laughs> Yeah, you're like, Ugh. But you can see how, like, Tim Burton looked at it. It's just like, nah, I want to go for something a little more outside of the box yeah exactly and and it's one of those things that you know he was coming from you know like Pee, Pee Wee herman you know like and, and, you know like and it's like and they kind of expected that like wackiness you know a little I, bit you know let's like, give, we, i feel like we should give at least somewhat of a synopsis since we mentioned that like maybe you haven't seen the original movie as we've true, proven true i mean it basically comes down to like it's a haunted house movie yeah it's a haunted house movie comedy if you yeah, wanted to describe it on its Michael, most with, basic level. Yeah, with Michael Keaton leading this, at, you know, absolutely now star-studded cast, but like, you know, like uh, M Michael Keaton really just showing how, it, you know, his his range from basically like Mr. Mom to Bruce Wayne, Batman to B Beetlejuice. Well, this was man before. Do anything. He did Beetlejuice first. Okay. Okay, but which I mean, actually, I mean um, if you want to see range, Michael, Keaton. like they worked, they worked together on Beetlejuice, I mean. which is why Burton wanted him as Batman. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, and then, and, and that's, and I think that's why they give him the that you want to get nut scene too. I think that they, they, they were like, yeah, I always Michael felt that Keaton as a kid to... that the you want to get nut scene. I'm like, oh, that's a little little Beetlejuice just slipped out there, huh? Yeah, a little something's there, and I feel like that's kind of what they were going for. They were like, they were like, yeah, we, you know, we need we need a little something, you know, not just all the time very controlled batman what yeah a little, just the uh, idea of spice. like no a batman realistically at least you know relatively speaking would kind of be an unhinged dude and that's what the burton <laughs> films lean into and i appreciate them for that 
Yeah, and I feel like uh, the Batman also leans into yeah, that sure. a little bit. Is that like they're like, uh, yeah, he's not well, you know, like he's not doing great, you know, like, like he is in a cave most of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like, fair, fair enough. You know, Robin, you know, like just but chilling, you know, like. And he does have like a presence throughout the movie, even though he's not he's not in it much. Mm. Yeah, no. To be like fair, he. I joke about Beetlejuice like being a Godzilla movie. How little Beetlejuice actually is in Beetlejuice is mm -hmm. the same as a Godzilla movie where you're like, well, yeah. it's God it's Godzilla, like, but like at most 20 minutes of my yeah. guy. It's why and I always hate it when um, people always try to use the misnomer argument. It's like when the 2014 Godzilla film came out, just like, oh, for a movie called Godzilla, there's barely any there's Godzilla, not much Godzilla in it. In it. There's not much like, God shit in you're like God motherfucker. Like, yeah, and there's it's less than Jaws. Ten, but yeah, that motherfucker's Jaws, in it for two minutes. Alien. Like it's <laughs> Anthony alien, Hopkins. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Hopkins won an for Oscar for Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. He's in that movie for less than six minutes of screen time. Yeah. Got it, it's it's about impact. It's about cinematic impact. It's not about screen time. Uh it's not about I, like we have to give these the numbers. <laughs> but I am kind of encouraged by uh, the director of Godzilla. Uh, is Minus it Godzilla? One. Can I say Godzilla X Kong? Or is it like, or is it just supposed to be like Hunter Hunter where I'm supposed to say Godzilla Kong? I would you say know, it's like... Godzilla X Kong because it's not Japanese. Cause, but ja I've seen the Japanese poster and they act like it's the Hunter Hunter. They're they're definitely like acting like. Well, there's no the X thing there. of the weird thing about the X is that that's a running thing. It's not just with Hunter Hunter. There's also like, there's also an anime called Holic, but it's spelled X X X Holic, but the X's <laughs> are silent. So it's just a thing with them. It's, it's either silent. Thing. Or it's a cross, like Street Fighter cross Tekken. You're like, what? Okay. I, whatever. I don't know. It's <laughs> well, always case clarifying. by case. It's so weird. Can, thank you for clarifying. But uh, so Godzilla X Kong, I love that the directors come out and been like, yeah, there's like uninterrupted, just like like CGI animal shit for too long. And I'm like, this man understands that there's not enough monsters in the monsters movies and he's gonna fix that yeah and like, not all of them are a minus even to one. the detriment of this movie he's gonna fix that like, yeah and not like, all of them can be a minus one where you're just like shit i actually care about what happens to these people <laughs> and uh you know and i feel like it's super funny that he's been like oh yeah there's but yeah there's doug there's the doug point is like he's the Omer argument is dumb it's really just about how much like impact you can deliver through yeah it. and it's not like and it's not like the stuff not pertaining to Beetlejuice isn't entertaining because you have good stuff like with Adam and Barbara who are kind of yeah. the real, like Adam, Barbara and Lydia are like the real like main characters. Main in characters. This. Yeah, absolutely. A and I would say that in the movie, absolutely. And in the, but in the musical, they're able to take Beetlejuice and in the show too, the animated show, they're able to take Beetlejuice into a uh, main character narrate mm -hmm. unreliable narrator and then you know an antagonist sort of yeah you know like, uh, like for sure and, interesting and, um like i love we, that also like it's when i watch beetlejuice it's been funny because we were just talking about batman one of the things yeah. that obviously barring current events which you could say <laughs> that for one other actor in this cast as well um <laughs> obviously barring current events I always I always think back to Tarantino saying that Alec Baldwin in the 80s would have made a great Batman. And every time I watch Beetlejuice, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I could see it. Yeah. Like, at this age and this stature. No, you, you get I get that, you know, like it's it's kind of like plus he, it, he's always he's had the voice, too. So I'm like, yeah, there. I could totally I could totally see it. Yeah, I think I think he it's not a bad take, you know, like I feel like he could have definitely done it, you know, like but, you know. At the, uh, that always yeah, that Martin only came up. Like it's not like Tarantino was going to direct a Batman movie or anything. That was just like <laughs> something that like came up in an interview. So it's like I'm not a huge superhero guy, but you know who would have been a good Batman? I think <laughs> you know who. Yeah, right. He loves throwing that out there. He's like, you know who Tarantino would have yeah. cast as a. Uh, but Batman? beyond Alec Baldwin, we have like super young Winona Ryder. We have Gina Davis, mm -hmm. who um. Mm -hmm. Huh, I'm pretty sure Lydia might have been one of my first like movie crushes as a kid without even realizing it. Yeah. Just like, oh, I am a I am baby Deshaun and I don't realize I like golf girls yet. I don't know how to explain it. 
I know. I had to explain the other day. Uh, I had to explain the hex girls thing to Mary, oh. you know, like I had to be like, cause she was like, she was like, no, that's not a very memorable, uh, Scooby-Doo movie. And I was like, not wrong. That's not the most memorable Scooby-Doo movie. I'm if sorry. That's the one. <laughs> if you're, well, I mean, the <laughs> objectively, the best one is zombie. Island. <laughs> but you want to talk about yeah. most. <laughs> Deshaun breaks out the voice, guys. <laughs> Objectively, <laughs> Zombie yeah, Island yeah, is better. Yeah. But, which is Ghost has Tim Curry, and it has the Hex Girls. Yes, and if you're, yeah, I look, mean, Matt, yes. if you were there, <laughs> if you were there, and you were attracted to women, or maybe even further didn't realize you were attracted to women yet, you know. <laughs> You know, know what we're saying. You know what you're saying. And I, I get, I, I thought, I thought it was funny because it was just like, Mary was just like, that's not, I don't remember that movie. And I was like, I was like, hmm. <laughs> I was like you don't I remember like, it because just... it didn't awaken something. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, that feeling you had for Simba, uh, it, you, Hex Girls. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. That, yeah, Simba you know. or Kovu. I know a lot of people with Kovu in the second <laughs> Lion King movie. Like, that was their guy. I'm You're like, like oh, yeah, I you guys have sweet. daddy issues, but that's okay. <laughs> Not wrong. Like, Kovu, just Kovu like... especially is like, oh, <laughs> yeah. but he's the bad boy. I can yeah, fix him. Especially. Exactly. You're just like, no. She's like, uh, I can fix him because you're worse. <laughs> you're just like, oh no. <laughs> uh, but besides the point, uh, <laughs> Beetlejuice the movie. I do enjoy the movie, but I'm not like the biggest f- the biggest fan. But I think it it has a great cast, really fun. Uh, re- it, you know, like and and you know, Tim Burton's having a good time, so it's like a great visual feast. Um, uh, I see but- it as like an interesting relic in Tim Burton's filmography, Mm. like sort of that perfect middle ground where like, we see him as a creative voice, but we're also not giving him too much control because I've always felt that Tim Burton needs to be on a slight leash to really deliver something. Like he needs that pressure. He can't just have a bunch of yes men surrounded by him, which is kind of shown in like any of his latest output the last like few years. Um, Mm -hmm. But also just, a time capsule because a movie like Beetlejuice is just so fucking eighties. Yes, yeah, I would say, and it's I like love a it for that eighties film. And yeah, I've like... seen it a bunch of times, so I have the fond attachment to it while also recognizing it is a weird, flawed movie, but it's also yes. very one of a kind in that respect too. Yeah, I, I would say that's one of the 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 great things about this whole thing is I feel like Beetlejuice feels very one of a kind. It's like you can try to aspire it to a bunch of other things but it is a kind of a wild kind of like fun demon story you know <laughs> like, it's, mm-hmm. you know, like and you're just like wait what like you're like wait a way to wait to, to the dude. point where like <laughs> the studio had no idea what they had they actually um wanted to rename the movie and give it a much more generic title like ghost house of course because it's right? just like beetlejuice what the fuck is a beetlejuice <laughs> we're not gonna get butts and seats with beetlejuice what is that that's weird and it works though, and it works, and it's worked to this day. You know, like is 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 the name being so strong? You know, like is is it? it like, yeah, I'm really... not sure how um far Ghost House the musical would have gone. <laughs> I mean, I've seen House. I've seen that horror movie House, the Japanese one. That one's quite. That one's. Now, wild. wouldn't that make a wild musical? <laughs> that would make a wild musical. Uh, floating heads and everything. Uh, but... but yeah, it's um. It's fun, but flawed, but there's also sort of nothing like it yeah. as well. And yeah. also, it kind of catapulted a couple of careers. Like, this was not only, like, a big showcase for Burton, like, post-Peewee, but it was also one of the things to further prove, like, Danny Elfman as a composer. Like, post yes. just his band stuff with Oingo Boingo. Oingo Boingo. I love, I love saying that. I'm sorry. <laughs> of course, that is it. Of course, it's just a great name. Like, uh, going... but if, if you, maybe you didn't know that though, like I know a lot of people don't know that that like Danny Elfman was in Oingo Boingo before, and mm-hmm. it was one of those things that they were like, they they were like, oh yes, come please, you know, like we they they, they were like bringing him on, you know, like to do these things, and now. Danny Elfman's one of the most respected composers in all of Hollywood, you know? Yeah, like, same absolutely. thing for, I mean, same thing for Hans Zimmer, right? Was What what band was Hans Zimmer in? He was in some band. I don't uh, know. 
Uh, but like, it's one of those things where you're just like, you're like, wait, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's funny how it's Burton, like, like a magnet attracts these like super eccentric, creative people that also have weird, quirky names. Just like I, my composer, Danny Elfman, who's like former frontman yeah. of Oingo Boingo. Oh, have you met my agent, Bumble Ward? And have you met my production design designer, Bo Welch? Yeah, you're like, what? No, oh, yes. So Hans Zimmer was in uh, Super Funny, the Bugles, uh, uh, the band, the Bugles. And it was in the video, Video Killed the Radio Star. So basically oh. was in the first you know, like the MTV music video that fucking sank, you know, like the radio. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And you're like, and then continued to be a fantastic. Always, composer it's always an interesting life. trajectory when you start off as like a general musician and then move on to composing. Cause you look at the careers yeah. of like an Elfman or like a Zimmer or even like Reznor and Ross. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or even um, jukebox at the moment, you know, like, uh, nor what's his, it's not jukebox. Uh, X, uh, who's, who did the justice league one? Uh, oh, um, uh, Tom Holkenberg, junkie XL. Junkie XL. That's it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's wild that he's doing soundtracks now. You're like, okay. All right. You know, like, yeah, the Rizzo too. If, come to think of it because he did like yeah. the music for the third blade. He also did the music for kill bill. You're like, all right. You're like sick, <laughs> like it's, exactly. You're like I love that, like. Uh, but besides the point, let's let's get into the musical because uh, I mean, I I was I was pretty blown away because, and it's kind of right from the get go. Is they and they they say it right away in the mu in the music. They're like, oh, what a de what a departure from uh, a direct departure from the source, the material. original source and, material. Yeah. And then they like kind of keep going at right after that. And it's one of those things that they are able to be like, right from the get go being like, we are doing something completely different, but it's still Beetlejuice yeah. and has that energy and, uh, and is go, but is going to be our own thing. And in a world where we already talked about Scott Pilgrim takes off uh, and it, we, you know, where everyone was so fucking angry that, you know, like, that it wasn't just an animated Scott Pilgrim uh, versus the world, you know, like that they. I was tricked. They, they, I was bamboozled. I was it was He-Man all over again. sequel. They ruined everything. I was, I'm, I'm, I'm angry you made a secret sequel. How dare you? <laughs> like, it's, it's just like, you're yeah. like, you um, got new content and like, but it's kind of like that where it's like, it, it's able to like Scott Pilgrim takes off stand on its own style. And yeah. Merit, which and, is an interesting, like, um, I'm doing my own thing trajectory. Cause, and again, this ties back to Batman. Everything is connected to Batman. Everything's early, Batman. early, early on, before we even had someone to like compose the music and write the book, when Warner Brothers was looking for like, they're looking at their properties in the same way that Disney looked at their properties. They're just like, why don't we take these fucking things and just adapt them for the stage? And make Warner Brothers stage. looked at their stuff, and one of the early ideas they had was to actually just make a musical of Batman 89. Oh. And... What happened was this was between Schumacher, but before Nolan and then Batman Begins came out and they're just like, OK, if we have Serious if, if we have this man in tights come up and sing, it's going to be like the Schumacher movies all over again. So we can't do that. Uh, what else do we have? And then they looked at <laughs> Beetlejuice and they're just like, OK, that seems like it could work. And then we ended up then we ended up getting it and it began off Broadway in Washington, D.C., it still kept like the um, cast we knew as, which eventually became the original Broadway cast started as much more like R rated and raunchier and like the dialogue and lyrics. You can actually find like the old demos for when the show was pitched uh -huh. and how much the songs have changed compared to like what you get now. And it's one of those things where they toned it down. Cause it's just like, all right, we, we kind of went a little too far. We could still like bring it back <laughs> without having to just force it and just try to make yeah. it funny because B did you said the F word? Yeah, but it was a show that like didn't wasn't especially well received at DC or even when it made the trip to Broadway. It was always sort of on the cusp of like keeping itself afloat in the original theater they were at. And then the pandemic hit it and stuff. And the thing that sort mm -hmm. of saved it, ironically, of all things, were Zoomers. <laughs> 
Like, yeah, I mean, it's tick is kind of TikTok, you know, like it's kind of being yeah. like, oh wow, this is uh, like I'm it had started the off of the as show. um uh I forget her name. I think it's Presley Ryan. She was the second Lydia after the original one left. Just on a whim would do like TikToks of behind the scenes stuff and them just doing like little rehearsals for the songs. And then that got a bunch of followers. And then it turned into a bunch of kids like doing the songs Mm -hmm. on TikTok, which gained popularity, turned people on to the musical. And then it started to sort of like find its audience and became a much bigger hit. Yeah. And, and, you know, now Deshaun's seen it twice and I've seen it. And, and like, it's really for me, it's about the energy. Uh, like I, there's a lot of adaptions of musicals, you know, like, like two musicals, like they take something and they make it a musical. This might be one of the best ones. This might be one of the best of just taking something that already exists and making it a musical, uh, because it is, it's able to bring its own energy, write great songs that actually you want to listen to afterward. Sorry, evil dead, the musical. I love you, but I, I just, I, I, and I had a great time going to see you, but I do not care about. Yeah. But it it sort of works just like as the whole, as the whole presentation, not all of them work. It's like, Oh, and I want to listen to it on its own, which is fine. Sometimes it really only works in its own context. Uh, yeah right that's totally fine uh i think that's that uh, that's how musical can be and that's great uh but But i think that there's a lot of great songs here yeah and you look at something like beetlejuice and you're like okay that's certainly zany enough to translate to a musical right but what are you what are you bringing to the table here and i think one of the things that helps is that they were put at a disadvantage because they couldn't get the rights to the elfman score Yes. So they couldn't just turn like the theme into its own song or anything. Or like, oh, we really just have to make up our own stuff now. Which I think was is great. It's kind of like throwing out the whole thing and kind of starting from scratch. And we get this uh, really like heartfelt, uh, full of energy retelling of Beetlejuice, you know, like uh, with lots of uh great solo songs uh which is surprising in beel juice you're like oh, okay you yeah know, like it's, and, and there's and still like, that little bit of fan service there so it's like okay we couldn't get the elfman score but we got deo and we got yes. jump in the line so we were able to right? get those and use those and actually turn that into like its own motif and that was and that's a great song too you know like i feel like they took the most fun part of the movie you know like and the musical part of the movie and made it even more fun and wild you know yeah, like, and you're just like that's great it's exactly what you want out of an adaptation you look at like the original material and you recognize it for what it worked but then you look at stuff that could have been fleshed out more or something that was sort of like untapped potential and you yeah. run with it the biggest thing being like lydia's dead mom in the original is just kind of a, like a throwaway line like we know just kind of like, that yeah, delia is her did. stepmom and that's as far as it goes we don't know how long lydia's mom has been gone it seems like um like delia has been in the family for a while but lydia just can't stand her but here it is just like oh the dead mom thing what if we made that the entire emotional crux of this right and and in a way you're like of course yeah you know like it's one of those things where you're like yeah that makes so much sense and it really uh, it becomes one of those things where Lydia goes from being, uh, you know, this, uh, this main character of the, of the movie to being like the, the main, the main character of the musical with Beetlejuice, you know, mm-hmm. like, and I think that that's super interesting, you know, like where it's, uh, I think that it's like them two together. It's kind of one of those musicals where it's like two powerhouse performances. And I yeah. think that that's And they almost, um, too. And it's almost like they had to discover it themselves as the production like went along. Cause in the original version of the musical, that opening prologue like ballad wasn't there. It just yeah. immediately went into the whole being dead thing. Really? Same yeah, thing with the, um, the, the end of the dead. movie when they finally actually do the uh, jump in the line song. Originally it was just a cover of the song and that's how it ended. You didn't get like the reprise of dead mom to like really, really? cap it off. So even oh, okay. as they were going along in the production, they sort of like discovered it themselves. I like that though. I like that, you know, like changing it to adapt to make it better. Like, uh, I, and, and you can see 
you know, like in the recordings, the difference between what we saw too, you know, like yeah. I feel like they, you know, may, they made changes, you know, like to, to things that made that worked better for what they were doing. And I think that that's super interesting. Yeah, even also. the, even the um, like album recording is conscious of like the differences, like just even as simple as the line of just like, if you die in the middle of the performance, the show will not stop changes <laughs> into like, if you die while listening to this album, it's still going to keep playing. Yeah. I, I you know, love that. Uh, and I think that I, I, it's, it's, it's an incredible thing to be like, wow, they were able to make this, not only great songs, a uh, great, uh, a great adaption of, of Beetlejuice, because it really does stick to Beetlejuice, but expands on it in all in <laughs> great ways. Uh, but also uh, is an impressive uh, Broadway production. Uh, I, I would, I, I never want that to pass up when I see a, a production like of this calibers, how, fantastic the set design was uh how well uh, uh choreographed the the scenes were uh, the the dance scenes but also just how everyone moves around the stage is it was incredible uh and just uh, some of the effects they were pulling off was really uh amazing really uh, yeah i just i just can't uh, as somebody who didn't know what i was getting into going into it I can't recommend this musical enough. I could recommend this to anybody. I feel like anybody who's ever been like, Bill Juice is fun. You'll be like, you'll love Bill Juice the musical. It's fucking great. Yeah. You know, I like, think, I think like, you were put in the perfect spot of just like, yeah, you've seen the movie, but yeah, you know, exactly. like very little about like the musical. And because it becomes its own thing in a great way, you were able to be like, so surprised and sort of enamored by it. <laughs> Me. Yeah. I had like already heard about it. I'm like, well, I like Beetlejuice and people seem to like this one. I'll listen to the album <laughs> since I might not be able to go see it. Yeah. Right. And then like, listen to the album a bunch, but because the musical isn't sung through, you're missing a lot of context. So you're like, okay, I guess I'll have to look up what the synopsis of the actual <laughs> like show is and hope I get to see it at some point. And then when they announced that it was coming to Boston, I'm like, all right, got to see that immediately. Yeah, right. And and I would say that to anybody. If if you are able to see this Broadway tour, if you're uh, f f or if you get a chance to see Beetlejuice on Broadway, uh, it, it's it, it is it still there or is it gone? Like, is it from the Hanover? The it's the gone. I, I think it's out. Like, no, the at the Hanover, it's gone. But on Broadway at the moment, is there? Can you? Oh, still broad, go see like actual Beetlejuice? Broadway in New York. It's been gone. Yeah. Like it already had its like that, final okay. run. That's what it's I strictly just the tour now. The tour now. OK, yeah. well, I would I would absolutely recommend it to anybody. And it's one of those things that I know that they're doing Beetlejuice too. We, me and Deshaun talked about it right away afterwards, where I was, where I was like, okay, well now I, after seeing Beetlejuice the musical, I'm kind of like, well, of course you're doing Beetlejuice too, because they were able to mine so much from just the first movie that of course you can do a Beetlejuice too and have as much fun about it. But then it makes me go, but where's where's Beetlejuice the musical the movie? Where's a uh, yeah? Where's this, like to be honest, know, like, like I the, the the best thing for me about Beetlejuice 2 happening is that one, it'll probably influence the tour to go on longer and maybe come yes. back because I would I'd fucking see it a third time. Yeah. And two, maybe get the pro shot of it because there was one planned, but then COVID hit and then kind of squashed those plans. And then now the original Broadway cast has moved on. So you're like, fuck. Yeah. So may, maybe I mean that would be really cool if we could if that could happen you know like a pro shot but more pro shots in general should happen it's just one of those things where you're like why did the success of Hamilton just have to be the success of Hamilton why are we not taking yeah. more musicals and doing pro shots <laughs> man cannot we, live uh, man cannot just live on fucking <laughs> Hamilton and the SpongeBob musical alone yeah I need more I like need what is stuff. that shit what is that you know like and, and 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 I and maybe it's because Warner Brothers isn't investing in that as much as Paramount and uh and and um well Disney did the you, you know but like you're well, the, kind of well like... the Disney thing is different because that pro shot for Hamilton was shot in 2016 yeah. and then it entered like a bidding war for it for years. And then <laughs> Disney was just the one who ended up on top who got it. Okay. So it's one of those things where you're like, why are we, 
Why are we sit? I know it might cost money, but I feel like you're sitting on money, guys. And I get the like filming these pro shots. Like what? The yeah, fuck? and I get I get the like logic, even though it doesn't really hold too much water. Of just it like oh, if, if we water. put it if we put it out for people, they're not gonna want to come see it. Just that's like, ins- to no. me. That's insane. To me, that's insane. That's like being like, oh, if I put out my music on album, if I put out a live album. People won't want to go see me live. You're like, exactly. no, you dumb idiots. Like, of course, if I li- if I listen to the live album, I'm going to want to go see him live. You know, if anything, anything, you know, like I remember, uh, you know, a bullet in a Bible when I was growing up, uh, go- the, you know, Green Day's uh, like live concert film. I remember being like, wow, I got to go see these guys live. You know, like it's one of those things where it's like you are not seeing that and being like, I am satisfied by seeing this on screen. I would Thank you never want to see this in person. I am done now. I have seen it, you know, like especially for a musical. Are you kidding me? It's about the performances and and the set and like and how it all comes together uh, I, I, I live in front of you. Like there's a magic in the theater, guys. Like mm-hmm. as much as there's sure, magic in cinema there is- and I love cinema. There's a magic in theater making it all happen right in front of your eyes. And sure, That's there is like fantastic. there's almost its own allure to the stage, and that like oh, it's fleeting. It it'll come yeah. by, and then that performance in and of itself is completely different it's from gone. this performance in little in little ways. Sure. And even that, if you miss it, it, you might never be able to see it. You know, at least legally, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's yeah, just exactly. it's just one of those things and sure that's also kind of beautiful in some way it's just like oh a thing is not beautiful just because it lasts yeah. sometimes it's fleeting but, but the logic still doesn't really <laughs> hold water like no uh, I, and there are yeah. so few of them like uh the ones that like usually come to mind are like there was a pro shot of cats from the 80s there's one of Phantom. There's yep. one of Les Mis sort of, but it's more like a concert sort than of. an actual like than the actual yeah, showcase the of the entire thing. play. There's Hamilton. There's SpongeBob. Uh, they just put out one for the Prince of Egypt because they, that was a really? West End musical for a little bit. I did not know that. Oh, M- M- Mary would love to listen to that. I might have to. Might have to grab that. Sheesh. Uh, but you said where is that streaming? Do you know? Um, it's just up. It used to just be on Broadway HD, but it's up on like the usual places like Amazon or Google by now for just renting. So you can just like rent it and watch it. Okay. Like I've, I haven't watched it yet, but it's, I mean, I'm like, I'm saying, that's what I'm saying though. It's like, I hear about it. And of course I instantly, and I'm like, yeah, I want that. You know, like I instantly I'm like, yeah, of course I'll watch that. You can't just like. You can't just hope to be like, oh, maybe we'll get a pro shot or maybe if we're extra, extra, extra fortunate, maybe we'll get uh, like an actual movie adaptation of it. And even then that comes with its own challenges and doesn't always translate. Yeah. So that's my thing is that, like, I would say people go see it as if you can on on this tour. And if they extend the tour, please go see it, you know, like, but. I would love a movie adaption of this. I would love a pro shot of this. I would love, uh, you know, like, it's just one of those things that I, I it, it, it just, I think it needs more attention. It's one of those mm-hmm. things where I know that like the TikTok uh, kids have blown it up, but like, it's almost one of those things where you're like, damn guys, that's, and if you're afraid of like, that's a good one. And if you're afraid of just like, well, we don't want to do this or we're trying to have the primary market focus on, the actual sequel, then you could just make it a max original. No one would right? really bat an eye. No one would give it in a world where we were do already doing that so much. It's like, come on, let's, let's be real. But I will say the absolute infectious energy that is in the room of seeing this live is hard to replicate. Yes. Uh, like the, it's going to and... be, it's that, that is, that is what I think is so special about this is not only is it a great adaption, uh, the, the music's great, but like just the way the story moves, the way the whole, e- e- the, the, the way the plot moves at a great pace, the, the way uh, the, the Beetlejuice is as a narrator, it, yeah. it just moves with such a great He's also energy. Like, and it gives, keeps you involved. He's even like interacting yes. with the audience and such. Like there's a reason why like, Post its success on Broadway, one of the nicknames that this version of Beetlejuice got was just like, he's kind of Broadway's Deadpool. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit, but like in a, in a, in a, 
in a fun way, you know. Yeah, not where he's just like, like he's raunchy, yeah. he's fourth wall breaking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> not your cosplay Deadpool. He's referencing like, hey. other like stage productions and stuff. Yeah, and it's fu- it's I think that that's fun and like and it's uh, it, it, they're able to make Beetlejuice, it, who's already played by the absolute charismatic Michael Keaton, you know, like into something even more wild and crazy and charismatic Mm -hmm. you know like and you're just like okay but it makes you be like i would absolutely watch michael keaton try to perform this even at this age i know how old he is but i would love to watch a michael keaton musical version of this like you know like i did think that several times i was like i would absolutely pay for this (laughs) whatever money i would pay to have michael keaton back for this musical version like i'm like whatever you need to do uh but i i will say that the guy uh, i know who plays him on the recordings it, uh, is alex uh, brightman who is also and, um he also played dewey finn in the school of rock musical that was a thing for a little bit he's also if anyone's is, a anyone listening is like a has-been hotel slash hell of a boss fan he's also fizz Raleigh on that and he's adam and he's so, um deshaun what w- I, I, it's a little off topic. What the hell? What is that? I, 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 it feels like something I should watch because I've heard it referenced by so many people. Uh, that has been hotel. Is that yeah. what you just said? All right. So here's the I, thing. Like, it was a thing. That? It was a thing that blew up five years ago because it was a, um, a completely independent animated pilot. That was like cool. almost up to the par of like professional productions, just as two pilots on YouTube, one for a show called has been hotel, one for hell of a boss, both by the same creator, a lot of the same people. And they just kind of blew up because you're just like, wow, this is an inventive concept. And it's really insane that you were able to deliver a pilot, this high quality go to go straight uh-huh. for YouTube. What's next. And then hell of a boss became a full series, just specifically on YouTube and it has a bunch of like Broadway stars on it and stuff that like come in wow. to do like guests. And then Has Been Hotel got picked up by A24 to become a series on Amazon Prime, which just started today. What? Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So the pilot okay. was the pilot was like four years ago. And then now it's finally like coming to fruition. So wow. it was a thing where like it kind of held its own fan base, especially since Hell of a Boss has been going on. It's really funny. It's raunchy. It's creative. I like it a lot. Okay, well, I'll have to check it out. I, I've just seen people talk about it, and, you know, Mary's nieces have talked about it. So I'm like, Yeah, oh, it's one of those things like, where, where like, in its own bubble, it became its own thing for a while. Yeah, it's like a, a crazy cult following. Yeah. Uh, that's cool, but, 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 but back to the point. The guy yeah, who Alex plays... Brightman is original Alex Broadway Brightman. Beetlejuice. The um, actor Incredible for the Incredible tour... talent. Incredible talent, though. Yeah. Like, I will say, like, that man... Uh, it, 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 there's a reason why like the TikToks took off because that man is 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 full of energy, you know. Like he really fucking brings it. But and he also has a, a genetic I, advantage because it's not yeah. easy to sing with that type of voice. And so, depending on who plays the part, like I've seen like clips of recordings of people who just don't go for the voice at all, and it doesn't feel the same. He yeah, has the advantage of just like he can, down to the Beetlejuice. yeah, he can vibrate his vocal cords because of the way its vocal cords formed, where it doesn't <laughs> give him the tickle in his throat, which means you're you know you're damaging it. Uh, so he yeah. can pretty much sing in that voice all day, and not everyone can do that. No, yeah, that's not easy. That's not easy. Uh, but the R, the guy that we saw in our performance, Deshaun, do you have the name right there? I mean, I'm trying to look again. it up because it because the general like tour Beetlejuice is Justin Collette, who is who I saw in Boston. In when we went to go see it in Worcester, it was the understudy. It wasn't Justin Collette, and I had trouble even when we had first came out of the show, and I was trying to post about it, like finding out who it was. Ah, uh, okay, because he was great he was fantastic I, yeah. I i thought he was fantastic i was like holy shit this guy brings down the house like absolutely like uh, leads this thing with the okay charge. i think in my threads i had said that i believe don't quote me on this correct me if anyone actually knows i believe it's matthew yeah. michael janice i think that i i mean the man brought because i had to look up man, like pictures like, of what the understudies look like and it's sort of tough to tell with like you know the beetlejuice yeah. like makeup and stuff you're like i think that's him 
<laughs> Thank that, sir. I I mean, it was a, an incredible performance from him and Lydia. Uh, yeah, the, Isabella Esler. She was also the Lydia when I went to go see it in Boston. She's which fantastic. Which I'm I've been talking about Beetlejuice and like his songs and his energy, but like really. Lydia's songs here are the songs. They're like the, the heart songs of the you're show. Gonna, yeah, they're the heart of the show. You're you're, go, you're gonna remember those. Uh, and she, the the actress playing it, real like absolutely just was able to hold songs by herself with nothing else going beyond behind her for songs. Which first off takes a lot of guts and a lot of uh you know power and and she had it and 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 the and, and then was able to like do these giant dance numbers with beetlejuice the whole time and you're just like this is nuts you know like just amazing stuff and i i always appreciate seeing a broadway show like one of my favorites was seeing um i got to see dan radcliffe and had his casino in business and they just Toss that man around for two hours, uh, and you gotta you gotta give the credit where athletic ability uh, where the athletic ability is because it, it really it takes a lot. To Just like do, do it two hours, and now do it four show. nights in a row afterward. Yeah, or do the matinee show and then do it again. You know, yeah, like you're just like are you you just did a whole athletic event and you got to do it again, you know, basically. Also you know, sing like and try not to and and then sing again and then sing again and don't lose your voice. <laughs> Yeah, right. And <clears throat> as I lose my voice, <laughs> as you do the Beetlejuice voice, you know, like at the same time, you know, you're just like, <laughs> but yeah, even like, um, even amongst fans who have like seen it on Broadway and stuff, or even got to see it with like OBC have like talked about how good Isabella, like Esther's version of it for the tour version. Like I've great. seen videos where people have like just did like audio recordings of like one of the shows or she's done like her version of dead mom or something and yeah. most of the comments will be like holy shit this might be this might be our best lydia i want to go see this version now yeah and and i i i can't recommend it enough i i really can't like i i i love I'm, I'm a sucker for musicals i am i i will i'm guys you you caught it's, me if i'm if a, you've been I'm with a the show for a while musical it's been brought up. We had a whole movie musicals episode where we really went into it. Yeah. I'm a sucker for a musical, but I'm also critical of musicals. Like I watch a musical and if it's bad, I'm just like, eh. you know, like, I'm just like, that's not it. You know, like, you know, like, but if, if they're able to bring the energy, I am, I am quite forgiving, but the, I think that this, this music, uh, this musical, the, the way, uh, it's paced, written, the set design, the, the effects, uh, the use of projection to do um, effects is is all astounding. Uh, the cast is fantastic. Yeah, and that's just like the tour version. Right. Like, e like the Broadway version even had like more advantages and stuff like the giant floating head for like the big like, oh, Beetlejuice <laughs> is finally free thing. And yeah. Right. Little little stuff like during the. um during the Deo like musical number, there's a scene, they have this thing where like they have a roast pig that they're eating for dinner and it comes to life, <laughs> but you have to adapt for the tour version in the same way yeah. that in the uh, Broadway version, Barbara and Adam die by falling through the like creaky floorboards, yeah, but you know, not every stage is going to have a trap door. So they adapted to be like, Oh, faulty wire. You got in. electrocuted. Yeah. Which I think works too. I think that actually makes a lot of sense, you know, like for to touring wise, you're just like, this makes, you know, we never know what set we're going to be on. We can't go through every floor, mm -hmm. you know, like, so my let's do, let's do this, you know, like, and, and even in the uh, tour, uh, even in the Broadway version, they're like, we're in the basement, but they're not in the basement. So you're kind of like, wait. <laughs> you're like you're like wait a minute this floor thing doesn't exactly work out either so i feel like the electric shock almost makes more sense yeah you know, like it just but i do get it because the them driving off the bridge in the original movie is one of the more iconic things about the movie in general is them going through the uh the covered bridge and dying, yeah with the you know, dog like... although i always felt like as a kid that wasn't high enough a fall for them to just like straight up die falling that way uh, i mean i'm from new hampshire those covered bridges they could kill you they you True. die <laughs> it's always been like one of my like 
fears is like being in a car and like falling into water like that. Like it's been, I think that's like the most recurring nightmare I've ever had yeah, ever since I was I, a kid, just like being in a car and it like going off a bridge into like into the ocean or something. Yeah. Mine is go is just going off a bridge is like going off the bridge. And most of the time it's that curve. Um, as you leave Boston on 93, it's just that like, Pew, you know, into the air. I wake up before the you know, most of the time before the car hits, unless you know. But mm-hmm. like, yeah, that happens to me a lot too. It's like the same dream where it's just like going. It's like to the, the point where I'm like mentally prepared for it. <laughs> We're just like, don't panic <laughs> immediately. Don't don't panic. Take off the seatbelt immediately. Kick out the fucking windows. Take <laughs> off your shoes. Deshaun's so goddamn prepared, prepared for this crash, even though it's never gonna happen. But he's prepared. which is ironic because I can swim, but I can't tread water. So it's just like, okay, I'll float, I guess. Wait, you can you can swim, but you can't tread water? Yeah, I can. I can like stroke. Anyone can fucking stroke. I just <laughs> hey, I never got the practice strokes. in to just like this actually stay. Strokes. I never got to. I never got the practice to like actually stay in place in one place. Okay. I can move. I just can't like stay in place. And every time I've like tried, I can't do it, and I don't swim enough to get the practice in. Yeah. No. No. I I get it. It's just I I think it's I I just thought that was like one of the things they're they're, they're just like get out there. You have to don't die. You know, like when they teach you swimming, they're like, you tread, don't die. And you're like, no. Yeah, <laughs> never really covered that. Like my don't die was just like, all right, I guess I'm going to punch, I mean, punch my Deshaun, way I'm, out of this. I'm no, I'm no one to talk. I was, I was 12 at a Boy Scout camp, but they were like, Frank, can you not swim? And I was like, I'm really good at sticking to the walls of the pool. And they were like, they were like, Frank, you can't swim. And I was like, oh, uh, no. And they like put like i had a week where i had to learn to like swim once a day you know like and then finally uh, the next year i did a mile swim to prove that i was much better and earned the uh swimming merit badge and you know like and all those things but it was like one of those things where i was like so i have nothing to talk on and <laughs> i am not much a better swimmer well i wasn't but <laughs> i'm much better now but <laughs> i was not i was and growing up i was just like i'm spider-man on the wall why and plus we're both leave? in our 30s yeah <laughs> if an emergency happens we might just cramp up even trying to swim <laughs> hey hey i like swimming i just like, like oh, i'm creaking swim. i'm creaking there goes the cramp i'm dead <laughs> i'm dead i'm going down i'm going down no, I lo- I mean I do I do love to swim. I feel like Mary the other day was like there's a Manchester uh uh swimming pool thing you can sign up for and I was like maybe mm. maybe I was like warm water sounds but, uh, nice in this freezing <laughs> going back cold. on topic. But yeah, but uh, you were talking the about point. the songs. Did you have any song that was like a particular favorite? I mean De- uh, Dead Mom of course is fantastic. Uh the the many repraises about the thing, uh, thing about death. Uh, yeah, the whole being dead thing. The whole being dead thing is great. Uh, I, I think that that's. I think those are fantastic. Um, what was another one? And, and what's the, the what's the, the the song where she came in front of the curtain? I can't remember the name of the song at the moment here, but she like came in front of the whole curtain and just sang for a bit. Uh, oh, when she's in the netherworld. Yeah, uh, maybe even before that, but yeah uh like it might be even before that but what's the context of like the scene like what is yeah, she singing i'm about? sorry but yeah that's that is the problem i don't remember uh but i i do i do want to say that she she uh she did a great job of yeah. those scenes and like that really blew me away the ones that. i tend to listen to the most like if i'm not going to listen to the whole album which i can it's like only half an hour so it's super easy to just yeah. put on um are that beautiful sound Yes, which is the song like um, just after the inter just after the intermission's over and after Girl Scout leads directly into that beautiful song sound. I love it because it almost it's almost like my love of horror described in a song. (laughs) And I I love the um, I love jump in the line slash like dead mom reprise, which is like the final song to get it out just because it's so emotional. I uh, I did love creepy old guy. I thought it was (laughs) I was like, Jesus Christ. When we got to, when they, the, the, the whole song, creepy old guy gets it. Look, fucking makes me. I mean, you had, you kind of, if you were going to tackle that plot point again for adapting it into a musical, you're going to, you were going to have to joke about it. And yes. to be fair, even in the original movie, 
<laughs> it's just like, hey, this is just a means to an end. Like even he, even Beetlejuice himself describes it as more like a green card thing. So like the show really leans into that. It's a green card thing. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Uh, I think the song is No Reason was the, is the name of the song. The song with, that's with Lydia and Delia. Yeah, I think so. Uh, And the song about like positivity versus cynicism. Yeah. And I also really liked what I know now. I thought that was also. I thought oh, yeah. Was, the Miss Argentina song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was I, I was really impressed with that because it's like one of those things where it's such a just throwaway joke in the movie. You know, like the, the Miss Argentina line. It's one of my to... favorite jokes in the movie, though. Like, I love <laughs> if you guys know me based on listening to the show, I love horror and I have a very fucking morbid sense of humor. I love dark humor. So like shit like that, that went over my head as a kid. I just laugh at but like, I wouldn't have had my little accident. And she just holds up her fucking slit wrists. That shit is hilarious to me. It is so morbid. It is. It's, it's great. It's, but like them turning it into this great song is, 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 is fantastic. Interesting thing that. about the original like Broadway cast for that. The same actress who they don't do this anymore but like the original showing the actress who played delia also played miss argentina so she had to do like a whole makeup turnaround and like as soon as as soon as like um what i know now was done she had to like quickly go into the like get rid of all the green makeup and stuff that's crazy that is nuts i do love that though i love i love shit like that uh, I, I love a great, you know, the like, uh, you know, I've said it before about like, you know, old Godzilla movies and stuff like that. I love seeing the effort it takes to make something. And that is the fun of uh, a music, uh, a Broadway show in, in any capacity, in any uh, uh, not Broadway show in general, but like any theater, you know, like because you get to kind of see the effort it takes to make it happen. And I feel like the Beetlejuice is one of those where you're like, just like, yeah, holy shit. Set, set design alone. It makes the house feel like its own character, which is always yeah. a plus. Yeah. It, and not, it, not only that, but they're able to like break it up and move around in the house and make it a visual thing, you know, like where it's like, you know, kind of like separate the attic a little bit so you can like see it. And then they yeah. Like cut. They to the like point where like you don't it, even you know, like to the point where you don't even really need the whole thing with like the model home in the original movie because that's not here yep. yeah it's exactly. just one of those things that's not... like interesting to point out is like what's here and what's not because i like because otho doesn't have a song on the album yeah. just in the musical in general i thought they had cut otho out until i like read the synopsis i'm like oh is otho not in the musical and you even asked me that when we were like during intermission it's like it's weird that otho's not here i'm like oh he's yeah. he's here he's just not he's here not here yet <laughs> he's mentioned yeah, I, thought they, I thought it was funny that they kind of play it off like Oh no, Otho's not here because but, they kept being like, as my as my guru Ortho Otho says. Otho always you know, like, says, yeah. And, and I was like, okay, so he's not here. Otho wasn't in the cartoon either. I'm like, damn, all this Otho erasure. <laughs> I love Glenn Shaddix. Come on. Come on. But I I I thought thought that he was it was such a fun add to the to the show too. It's just and that's the thing. I definitely the 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 second half started and I was like, where do we, where are we going from here? You know, like it was one of those things where I was like, we're almost at the end of Beetlejuice by the time the intermission happened. What do you mean? You know, like what, like what, like in the movie was already rushing towards the end there. What do you mean? There's a second half, you know, like, yeah. And then like then Beetlejuice the is awakened is able to, like, and that's like the third act. Just right? like we're awakening. We're like releasing him here and we're only halfway through. So like, where do we go? Yeah, and I feel like that's the uh, is it's it's one of those things where I was like, how do they do this? You know, like how 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 are they going to adapt this and make this work? And I was astounded and uh, amazed and kind of just really impressed with how they were able to like make it uh, fun, move, and it doesn't feel like a waste of time. A yeah. lot of second acts feel like a waste of time to me in a lot of ways where it's just like oh yeah you have to have an intermission because it's a uh, you know it's a it's a it's a play but sometimes i'm like Did middles need that middles intermission? are tough. you know like yeah, like, like i struggle I, with that in my own writing like i always know how something's gonna start and how it's gonna finish but that middle that middle is <laughs> that middle <laughs> that middle is a negotiation process 
Also, just really to be like, like on the wow. positive side, guys, leave Girl Scout alone. That's that's the one song I see people kind of shit on sometimes. So I'm just yeah, like, it's really? fun. It's, it's fun. funny. Leave it alone. I thought it was fun. Uh, and plus, I, and I, plus, it's a good plus. It's a good like segue into that beautiful yes. sound. It's a good way to like bring us back. Kind of. Yes, I think so too. I think it's a it, it's a very musical way of being like you 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 know like let let's see the new um standard they have set the new yeah. you know like you know like what way it is now you know like, and i also uh, i also love the aspect of just like lydia not bringing beetlejuice like out of the proverbial bottle to like save adam and barbara but just to be like fuck you dad yeah. my house now rebel I rebel like rebel that. i do like that i i like that more you know like instead of the weird like Okay, we're gonna share the house, but now uh, Lydia. I mean, the, they'll sort of just live with us, the ghosts. Like it's just like it, 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 the ending. You're just like, wait, what? Okay, we're just here. They're here now. Okay, like you know, like it's just like one of those things where they're able to change that. And, I feel and like to be fair, like way. I do sort of miss like the heavier stuff in the bio exorcism in the original movie like that third act is messy but it's a genuinely haunting scene where you see like adam and barbara start to like rot as they're like dying even though they're already dead yeah you're like oh oh yeah there's some fantastic great effects. practical effects and great like great stop practical. motion too with like the sculptures it's yeah, interesting that absolutely. like the sculptures were sort of there as like a background thing but we also yeah. don't establish that dealy is like a sculpt sure person we just we just do like the it's life just, coach thing they're just kind of like it's her style you know although like, i do think that was smart like a modern interpretation just like making her a life coach and just, like yeah. charles and her having an affair before they actually get together yes exactly I, I think there's a lot of things that they change and i think it works better and i feel like i i i I genuinely want more people to see this. Yeah, is basically even, it. You know, even Adam and Barbara, from a characterization standpoint, being slightly different than the movie. Whereas, yes. like, because like Adam and Barbara in the movie are just kind of a mood. Like, I love them. Just like, look, we just want to, <laughs> we just want to hang out at the house and just get work done. Leave us alone. No, we don't have <laughs> to have kids. Versus the like, we're kind of afraid to take the next step in our lives. We're kind yeah. of terrified by the idea. And now that we're dead, we never got to take that step. Yeah, but then exactly. they really push the whole like, okay, Lydia's like the surrogate daughter figure in this case, yeah. like something that we can help. Yeah, I I I think that it, it's it it improves on a lot of stuff, which I, I you know as as a you know people of fans of the original movie, you'll be like, what you know like the musical Beetlejuice improves on the movie, and you're like in a lot of ways, yeah, in a lot of ways, like. uh I had, I, that's I've had people tell me though, it's it's better. It. I had a friend who um he had watched the I musical first, I and then I showed him, and then I showed him the movie afterwards. So he saw the stage version first, and he's just like, I prefer the musical. And I've had a couple yeah. friends say that too, where it's just like, I prefer the musical. I'm like, I totally get it. I totally get it because uh, you know, as somebody who's not like the biggest fan of the movie, you know, I'm not like uh, over the uh, like. I like it. I do. I do. I'm not saying. I don't and I would like say there's probably but, maybe only uh, a few instances where bad. like that's the case. Where like, oh, I actually prefer the musical version of this thing. Right? I already had an original version. Like Ma I mean. Matilda, oh. the musical is great, but I still prefer the original movie. Legally Blonde, the the musical slaps i will say that i will uh <laughs> i will say i kind of enjoy the musical more than the movie it's even like blonde. um because i'm trying to think of an example because most of the time like i will probably just prefer the original like same thing yeah. like i know i know you're a big fan of the um of like the nathan lane matthew broderick version of the producers yes i i am yes i'm not huge on it i feel like it doesn't translate no no, as a movie, I feel like it's performing to an audience that doesn't exist. Oh, and it always okay. comes off. It always came off as just kind of stark and weird to me. All right. I get that. Maybe I got to rewatch. I think it's again, one of those things where like they tried to translate it too much, like one to one and try to make it conform to it yeah, as I'm opposed to really looking at the medium and trying to like bend it to make it work a little more maybe that's why i like it is it, it is feeling like you're watching a show you know like true uh, you know, but like it's right it's weird to have like the we're done we yeah. did it 
clap, but there's no audience there to actually clap. So it's just kind of awkward. Uh, yeah, may, uh, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I, I always endeared to that, though, is like it's weirdly be like waiting for an applause that's not coming. Yeah, you know? like, like you can't like keep a... stuff like breaks and stuff like that when you're in this new medium. There's nothing yes, there's true. nothing to bounce off of. <laughs> so true. Uh, and that's what I mean is that even even here, it's like, uh, you know, like they are able to change uh, this this movie formatted thing or even cartoon formatted thing and making it into a musical and, and, and change the format and make it work. And I mm-hmm. think uh, uh, which is why I, basically, be. yeah, guys, so, to sum it up, uh, Beetlejuice, the, the musical, absolutely go see it if you can. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, go see it. Uh, bother warner brothers to go to make it go around more to to, it's at to least, get a pro shot to get something i think it's already had great. like one extension past like its original like intent just because it's been doing well it's already recouped the cost for the tour itself so you're like all right all keep right. it keep it going if it comes this way again i would love to see it a third time and i want a pro shot if anything to just preserve how cool the effects are yeah exactly I agree. And I, I, I will say that you, that, that this is different than the movie, uh, but in a lot of ways better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but in a, in a, in a loving way to the material, because in a lot of ways, it's like the, it's the ideal adaptation that you can kind of hope for something where it's that perfect middle ground of like actually satisfying people because people (laughs) are fickle and you're just like, well, I don't want it to just be the same. I want it to be different, but not too different. Not too but different. too different, because then it won't oh, be like the thing I like. But don't make it too the same, because then it's just the same. You're like, uh, all right. And this actually <laughs> right. manages to like fall within that very, very narrow requirement. <laughs> it, and it does it. I think it does it. And I feel like it deserves more attention, uh, more eyes. And I feel like we, we deserve more Beetlejuice, the musical as an audience, you know, like I feel like it needs to take off in a bigger way. Uh, and, uh, I, I want more. It's basically it. <laughs> You're like, give me more of that. Uh, Warner brothers. Come on quick. <laughs> you know, like let's get, let's give me, give me more Beetlejuice, the musical. Uh, but then also you can keep going. You know, yeah, like, at least, at least just at least give me the pro shot. <laughs> at least give me the pro shot. <laughs> just give me the pro shot. I can't live on the album forever. <laughs> it's true. So, uh, <clears throat> guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Warp Shelf podcast. Um, be sure to check us out on galaxyofgeek.com. You are watching us on the Galaxy of Geek YouTube, maybe, if you're watching our beautiful faces, but you can be listening on any podcast platform if you're listening to audio only. Um, and uh, make sure you hit the buttons down below to make the algorithm go blah, 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 blah. And uh, basically, if you want to see uh, me and Deshaun in our own personal ones, if you're if you're done supporting the show, if you want to check out our personal uh, social medias, you can check out Yep Frank or Yep Gundam on uh, everything. Yep, yeah. and I'm Mod Karika pretty much everywhere. I actually just hopped onto Threads just for the excuse to make a media thread throughout the year. So if you want to check out exactly what I'm doing and like what kind of media I'm consuming, I'm pretty much posting everything. I'm already up in the 30s for like stuff I've done, <laughs> including like this, movies I've watched, like games I've beat. Which is a great transition to, um, I mean, check that out. Uh, I'm also on threads now. Uh, yep. Gundam on there and you should, but it, that is a good transition to that's the next episode guys. We're going to do our 2023 year in review. Yep. We're going to go through everything we played, watched t- and we're just going to go through it all and talk about what really Highlights stands out. And then end with like our favorites of the year based on like medium and the like. And like, and guys, uh, so get ready for that episode that's coming uh, very soon. But uh, thank you for supporting this episode and supporting the show in general. And uh, I can't wait to uh, talk to you guys again and talk to Sean again. Adios, amigos. We'll see you then.